Well, I guess we were in the market for some new hay sheds. All our hay sheds were constructed in the 60s, um, built in house by my late grandfather, and unfortunately, one by one, they've slowly fallen over. And hay's a, a very big part of our enterprise. We run 300 thoroughbred horses and 400 dairy heifers a year. We shopped around, but we love the concept of working with Bison because they're a local company. And there's no doubting that their sheds are, are very superior. Price competitive for a uh, superior product. A lot of the cheaper uh, pearl and sheds, uh, C-section sheds, obviously were, were very appealing price rise, but I wanted to do it once and do it properly. And we went around and looked at some other bison products in the district and spoke to farmers that had, had dealt with them and put their sheds up. And there was no doubting that their sheds were better than any others we saw. So for me, quality, do it once and do it properly. I'm someone that loves a plan and you want it to go to plan, and this very much did. We had a um, extremely trying winter. It's probably the wettest winter uh, in 30 years of records here at Armidale and um, we had a lot of trouble getting the base in. Bison were wonderful, they were very understanding that when it did come to the erection of the shed, although it was delayed, it was amazing how quickly it went up. We, we had um, material arrive and it was standing and cladded within a week. It was, yeah, it was textbook, it really was. Because we wanted the, the job to be quite aesthetically pleasing as well, we sort of mirrored the overhang on the machinery shed and we found it to be great. Um, I never planned on using it as, as direct storage, only as, as protection, but because it's been such a great hay year, we've got hay stored right to the edge of the overhang. And it was great going through the design phase uh, with Bison. They've sort of encouraged us to probably build up a bit higher than we initially planned, and, and we definitely don't regret that. We were looking at seven and a half and eight metre bays in our two sheds. Um, and we could go out to 15 and 16 metre bays by putting a girder truss in. Um, we love the idea of it, but it wasn't really until we saw it uh, in front of us that we realised what a good investment that extra spend was. Just not having the pillars to be worried about when you're reversing back after loading hay, especially after a long day. Just having such a big opening, it, it, it really made getting in and out of the shed easier. Now we, we opted to, to go to the girder truss on the, on the hay barns, which opened them up to 15 metres. Uh, and we opted to save the money on the machinery shed and, and keep them at 8 metre bays. And, I don't have too many regrets or I wouldn't change too many things, but probably opening the machinery shed up to 16 metre bays using the girder truss um, would be something I would do now. And as I said, I think it's, it's something Bison encourages us to do and we're very grateful of that. We finished carting hay in at, at 2 o'clock this morning. Although the rain wasn't forecast to come to lunchtime today, it's 9.30 and it started raining this morning. So we were uh, very glad to have all our hay under cover. And yeah, there was just so much damage just to stuff sorted outside last year and... and in a year where the, the value of the product was probably at an all-time high. So uh, although this year's been a bumper hay season, I'm sure we'll have some tight years again and we hope this shed will pay for itself over and over again. Uh, it was only 10 years ago, we were predominantly using a 100 horsepower tractor and, and gear that probably, a lot of the gear that my grandfather bought. So uh, the last 10 years have seen huge development in our business in getting machinery that is allowing us to be more time efficient uh, and more productive and a lot of that gear is expensive, it's got a lot of electronics on it. We saw the need to start shedding them to look after them and, and unfortunately we didn't have the, uh, the shed capacity in our business in the past to um, accommodate that sort of larger, newer machinery. When we looked doing it at the hay barn, we thought we'd, and the site sort of suited two sheds, it was obvious to, um, to do them together and, and hence we've gone for a machinery shed that's probably, you know, uh, looks more like a hay barn. It's got eight metre openings, 13 metre bays, six metres high. Can definitely fit all the machinery that we've got now and hopefully it's reasonably future proof as well. We felt that to be pretty important. Also, you sort of never know exactly where your business will be in the future. So we made the sheds. So if we ever wanted to be storing fertiliser or grain. So for me, having a, a drive-through bay with, with some doors, as you can see behind us, it allowed us to get two fully loaded semi-trailers of hay or fertiliser in under cover easily. So, uh, an eight metre opening with two four metre sliding doors uh, allows us to park the two semis side by side. We're farmers, there's always hiccups and, and most projects have a, a, a few small hiccups, which this did, but um, what was really pleasing for us is, is they were never an issue for bison. To be honest, a lot of the hiccups we didn't even pick up on, they were non-picked up hiccups. They were just fixed without any qualms and for us that was great. It's, look, it's very satisfactory to see um, what we'd planned for a few years come to fruition, uh, especially in such a good hay season. We've got the sheds overflowing, we've still got hay to come in. Going from, from design on paper to implementing on site, um, it really has gone really well and as good or better than we expected. Mm -hmm.